All right. Good morning. Here we are. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Who's out there with us? 6.59. We're starting a little early. Well, we really always start at 6.59. But let's see who's out there. We got Chris Perry. Good morning. Faithful Chris. Calvin. Hey, Calvin. Noel, my brother, family member, and friend. Good morning. Dave Krikak. My friend of 30 years. I think even more than more that, than maybe. That. I think so, yeah. yeah. Jim Baker, good morning. Denise, good morning. Denise. Awesome. Hey. Kua, good morning. Ricardo. Love to see everybody. Carol Hello. Goodwin, awesome, fantastic. Kelly Brown, good morning. Good to see everybody. Give us some thumbs, some hearts, some comments today. It'll help push the word out to more and more people all the time. Don't forget, don't forget to do that. That's really important. So here we are preparing for Pentecost. This is day seven of 10. Day 7 of 10, May 28th of 2020. I hope this has been a blessing for you all so far. I know it has been for Sarah and I. And just in case you're wondering, just in case you're wondering, like, is this just stuff that you say and then forget or don't, you know, care about as much or, you know, not that you would think we don't care, but what I'm trying to say is, listen, the Lord speaks to Sarah and I about this just like he does you. Mm -hmm. Just because we're the ones teaching it or commenting on it doesn't mean that we've got it all figured out and we're perfect in this. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Nobody ever has been. But what we're trying to do is communicate truth that's going to help people and help ourselves. Mm -hmm. Help help us do business with God. Help us wrestle with God and, uh, and allow the Word of God to transform us. So anyway, just wanting to say hey and uh, give you that <clears throat> that word this morning i've got a frog in my throat clear it up honey <clears throat> there we go allergies all right so here we go day seven now beloved let me go real quick so far we've talked about obedience expectancy unification prayer being passionate and being persistent so those are our six topics we've discovered so far. Mm -hmm. They are a perfect segue into what we're going to talk about today. Because you do not have those six things apart from the seventh thing that we're going to talk about today. Right. Which is to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Spiritually hungry. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're going to be obedient and expectant and unified and prayerful and passionate and persistent... You've got to be hungry and hungry, friends, for more. Hungry for more of God. Hungry for more supernatural power to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hungry for more. Now, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said these famous words. But you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You shall receive power, dunamis, where we get our word for dynamite. Jesus is promising them that the promise of the Father includes and even is about supernatural power that they've never experienced before so that they can be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now friends, hear me. I, I'm saying this with all seriousness, but also with all humility. Now, listen to me. The scriptures bear this out, okay? These people that Jesus promised this power to, they had already experienced salvation, they had already been saved. They had already experienced Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. They had already encountered the resurrected Christ. They had already believed. Mm -hmm. John chapter 20, they had already been sealed with the Holy Spirit, Spirit right? as Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Spirit. But there's more. There's more, and Jesus said there's more. After they had experienced all that, Jesus said there's more. Mm -hmm. 
There needs to be a supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit on you believing brothers and sisters so that you can now be a witness for me into all the world. More of the Holy Spirit's power. And they were hungry for more. And everything that they've exemplified for us and demonstrated for us so far proves they were hungry for more. Okay? Now, the question, friends, at least moving into this, are you hungry this morning for more than your own salvation? Or are you content with it? Your own salvation, it's enough. I've arrived, got my fire insurance. I love Jesus. I know he loves me, but that's just kind of where I am. Mm -hmm. Or are you hungry for more? It's a, it's a really, friends, we have to ask ourselves a very honest probing question. And then if we say, yes, I'm hungry for more, then between you and God, you've got to say, Lord, here's what demonstrates that I'm hungry for more. Because mm -hmm. I'm not just saying it. I've got I've to do it. I've got to demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. Is there proof, friends, that you are hungry for more of the Holy Spirit? Does your prayer life show that you are? Do your, des do your desires show that you are? Does the ministry show that you are? I'm not asking as wonderful as it is to be a nice, kind, loving person. That's all wonderful. But what I'm asking you this morning is, are you hungry for more? And is there evidence? Is there proof of that in your life? So I want you to answer that question between you and God this morning. Are you hungry for supernatural power so you'll be more of a witness so that more people can be saved, healed, delivered, impacted, whatever that might look like through your life. You see, friends, supernatural power, the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not just for us. It's for the sake of others. It's not just so we get some zing and some thrill. Yeah. It's for others. So is there evidence that you're hungry for more because you want to see other people impacted? Serious stuff, yeah. super important stuff. Okay, so they're hungry for more. Now we go, okay, well, what was the result of their hunger? Did God come through like he promised? Well, of course he did. Acts chapter two, verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were hungry and they were filled. Jesus, you know, going back to, to um, the, the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are the thirsty, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, righteousness for they shall be filled. Mm -hmm. God says, if you hunger and thirst for me, you, you are going to be filled. You, you are going to. Here they hungered for more of the Holy Spirit. They were filled with more of the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? They begin to speak in a language that they had never learned before. Why? Because there on the day of Pentecost, there were people, the scripture records for us, from at least 17 different nations. And God wanted those people from the nations to hear the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. God filled them with more in order to reach more. Isn't that awesome? Turn to your neighbor and say, more, neighbor, more. Come more. on, more. <laughs> but this, this is it. We need to get this in us, beloved. So, so the Holy Spirit shows up. I, you know, and I wrestle with how to word this, but the simple truth is when you pour yourself out and you offer living water or you're feeding those that are hungry, not only physically, but spiritually when you're feeding, you need to be filled back up. Yep. There needs to be a going back for more. It's like, okay, I've exhausted. <laughs> I'm, you know, and that happens in ministry big time. And I'm sure you guys experience it too. It's just like, man, after you've poured yourself out, you need refreshing and you need to be filled back up. But there's nothing more fulfilling, I think, in, in my own life 
then having poured out for others. It's just like, it's, it's absolutely an incredible rush right, right. to pour out for others. So you're requesting more, not just for your own sustenance, right. but to pour out, which is, you know, I mean. For others sake. Yeah, for others sake. That's right. So they get filled with the Holy Spirit. They begin to speak in other tongues to reach more people. So there it is, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They received more, but there's more. But hold on, there's more. Because these exact same people went from Acts chapter two in the book of Pentecost to Acts chapter three under the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. healing the guy at the gate beautiful. They get persecuted for it. They get to Acts chapter four. They gather together in the midst of persecution. They don't They're, care. They don't care. They're <laughs> praying together because prayer is what they did. They're praying together. And now what happens? Listen to this prayer and see what happens. Acts chapter four, verses 29 through 31. Love this. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. <laughs> Are, Byproduct, boldness. Yeah. That's in a couple days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going, Steve, but I thought it just said they got filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And now it says that these same guys are getting filled with the Holy Spirit again in Acts chapter 4. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Why? Because there's more. And there's not just more one time after you get saved. There's more repeatedly after you get saved. And we're gonna see that in a minute, but I, I, wanna, I want you to see this concept of more, hungering for more for yourselves and hungering for more for others. Because Acts 2, it happens. Acts 4, it happens. And, and this is now part of their lifestyle because now we get to Acts chapter eight. Philip is preaching the gospel in Samaria signs, wonders, healings, deliverance. I mean, revival has broke out. Can you believe it? Among the Samaritans. And when word gets back in Jerusalem that the Samaritans are getting saved, Acts chapter eight tells us that, that the disciples in Jerusalem, the apostles in Jerusalem, sent James and John to Samaria for the very purpose of seeing if they too had been filled with the Holy Spirit. They were saved. But this component of more of the Holy Spirit was so a priority for them, they sent him to see, did it happen? And what does the scripture say? He hadn't fallen. He, the Holy Spirit, hadn't fallen on any of them yet. Mm -hmm. They laid their hands on him and prayed for him, and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Because there's more. Acts chapter 18 is our next story. Great story about this guy named Apollos. Apollos was a disciple, he was eloquent, he was mighty in the scriptures. He had so much going on that was right. But when Aquila and Priscilla meet him there in Ephesus and hook up with them, yeah. it says that they had to take him aside and talk to him about the word of God with greater clarity because he only knew John's baptism of repentance and he didn't know the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was a believer, he was mighty in the scriptures, he was eloquent, he had tons of stuff going right. He was, right, he's teaching and preaching, he's got tons of stuff going right, but he was lacking this issue of the power of the Holy Spirit. And they had to take him aside and teach him the way of God, it says, more accurately. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. He only knew so much. Yeah, but he was excited yeah. to learn more. For more. And Aquila and Priscilla were excited to share mm -hmm. the more with him. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 19. The apostle Paul is there in Ephesus. He finds some disciples and he asks them because the issue of more is so important. He asks them, 
Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? What do they say? We've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. We've never so much as heard whether, the, well then into what were you baptized? Well, we were baptized into John's baptism. Well, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus and you need hands laid on you. And they received the Holy Spirit and they started speaking in unknown languages, mm -hmm. in unknown tongues. Friends, more, 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 hungering for more, more for you, more through you, more. Now, this issue of continually receiving more. I just showed it to you in the scriptures. John chapter 20, they had an encounter with the Spirit, but there was more. Acts chapter 2, they got more. Acts chapter 4, the exact same people got more. Those exact same people made sure other people got more. Mm -hmm. This issue of more and more happening repeatedly, the Apostle Paul sums it up, and, and I love this. In Acts, or excuse me, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, how does Paul word this? He says, I don't want you to be drunk with wine. He said, which creates riotous behavior, uh, dissipation. But he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you go, okay, well, it says be filled. That sounds like it's a one-time thing. No, 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 no. In the Greek language, it says this, be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm experiencing the Holy Spirit. I'm being poured out. I'm receiving more, I'm being poured out, I'm receiving more, I'm being poured out. Listen, it's what Sarah said. If you're not gonna be poured out for others, why would God do anything new or fresh in your life? It's a bad investment for him. If he filled you with the Holy Spirit and you didn't, you didn't um, um, express mm -hmm. or, or use any of the Holy Spirit, I mean, just to use human language, your, your capacity is still full. There's no room for any more. But if you're pouring yourself out, and again, using human terminology, and you're, you're getting drained because you're pouring yourself out, mm -hmm. it enlarges. Is that a word? Enlarges. enlarges. Your capacity for more. Friends, in these last few days leading to Pentecost Sunday, let's be hungry for more. Let's, let's repent of not being hungry, of being satisfied with worldly materialistic things, for being satisfied with the status church quo in America that just satisfies itself with occasional church attendance and writing a check every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Surely Jesus died and rose for more than American churchianity. Yeah. Surely he rose for supernatural power to, to touch our lives with resurrection power so we can touch others. Let's be hungry. For that, let's be hungry for more. Let's be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Now we're pointing towards Pentecost, but it doesn't end there. Mm -mm. You know what I keep thinking about? And I, I just, the good old days, I wanted to say, when we were new believers, when we were younger in Christ, and we had afterglows, after every Wednesday service. We had Wednesday services. It was just a general teaching that happened, but there was a small group. Everybody was invited. But not everybody but not showed. not everybody showed up. There might have only been like 12, 15. It was a small group that would show up. Because they were hungry. Because we were hungry <laughs> and we just wanted to wait and we would go in this little side room and intercede and pray and, and the Lord would show up in new and different ways and and I, and what's really familiar to me, or, or what I remember the most, is that there were words of wisdom 
and words of knowledge that nobody would ever know that another might require. Right. But to be able to say, I don't know why I'm seeing this, but what I'm seeing is this, and somebody in the group just going, oh my, oh my gosh, gosh, you have no That's idea. Yeah. I need that. And so even today, you know, when we're speaking about power, and maybe this is just because it's, it's me personally, but I feel like the main need right now is the gift of wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives. He's our tutor. It says in the word, yeah, that's it's our right. comforter. I mean, there's so many different um, attributes that the Holy Spirit gives, but specifically in this day, in this hour, I just feel like the supernatural gift of wisdom, you know, that doesn't come from man, but it's just like, whoa, that is Solomon's, the wisdom yeah. like Solomon was given. That's right. And it was a simple, simple answer that the Lord gave Solomon how to, you know, work through the scenario back in the Old Testament, but but it is supernatural when it just is so clear and concise. So anyhow, I, I would love to be able to pray for that at well, communion. Well, for sure we can. And Sarah's point is well taken, friends. The power of the Holy Spirit brings the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The gifts of the Holy Spirit reveal the heart and mind and will of Jesus mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. believers and unbelievers mm -hmm. alike. And so when we're talking about power, listen, read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, mm -hmm. um, um, gifts of healing, gifts mm -hmm. of the gift of tongues, gifts of prophecy to mm -hmm. speak divinely inspired words. I mean, so many things. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Read Romans chapter 12 verses 6 through 8. Read mm -hmm. these passages of scripture that help us see what more looks like. Yeah, like really read those. Yeah, really like read really them. Really read yeah. those, yeah. All right, <sighs> friends, there you go, more. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say more. 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 <laughs> All right. So friends, we're going to partake of communion now. Sarah's gonna pray and uh, let's mm -hmm. believe for more. Mm -hmm. Let's set our hearts toward more mm -hmm. as we approach Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all of the attributes the Holy Spirit gives to those that you call your own. And even now, Holy Spirit, we are asking that you would baptize this congregation that's participating right now with the supernatural gift of wisdom, not wisdom that man can give, but wisdom that literally comes straight and directly from your throne room. Father God, concerning um, plans and purposes that you have for your people, concerning how to make um, businesses uh, flourish once again, considering how um, to oh, just step forward in the plans and purposes that you have for your people, we know, Holy Spirit, that you have wisdom, and it's crazy creative, it's out of the box, and at times seemingly supernaturally practical. But we're asking in, in your name, Jesus, in your name and for your glory, that you would deposit in all of us that next step and what it might look like, that you would literally give words and, and quick, um, quick bits of wisdom as to how to answer yes or no concerning business offers and dealings, Father God, that you would just give a keenness to your voice, to everyone that's stepping forward in business specifically, Father God, concerning um, moves, concerning family life, concerning rearing children and homeschooling and not, Lord, that you would just amplify your voice and your wisdom in every one of our hearts, Father God, that your kingdom would be expanded and Lord, that you would visit us all with a supernatural peace that passes all understanding because we're leaning into you at every turn. We thank you for it, Father God. We thank you for the body and blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood shed on the cross 2,000 years ago is the most powerful, I don't want to even call it a thing, it, it's the most powerful Force. It's the most powerful offering that could ever have been given.
for the sake of your kids that would believe and trust you for salvation. We trust you with our futures. We trust you with your plans and purposes. We trust that you're with us. In Jesus' name we partake. Amen. 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 Let's partake of the bread and the cup together now, beloved. Mm -hmm. We believe in the communion of the saints. Amen. Let's hunger for more. I want to encourage you beyond our walls too. this coming Sunday night, Williamson County Ag Expo Center, 6 p.m. Got over 30 pastors, black, white, Hispanic, massive choir. Listen, friends, we're going all in. We're believing for more. Would you pray for those that are involved? Pray over this event. Invite people to come. Listen, don't stay home and just watch online. I mean, that's wonderful if you cannot make it. We want you to come and be a part. Let's be in one accord, in one place, praying, waiting, and believing for God to show up with more. God bless you, friends. We'll see you soon. Share, share, share. Download the notes. Come on, let's get equipped for more. We love y'all. God bless you guys. Good day.